Did you think about what we discussed last time? I thought about it. But you didn't mention it at all. Becca, I have a fiduciary responsibility no, to you. No, you don't. As your father's lawyer, I have a fiduciary responsibility to his estate. And your inheritance is part of that. As far as I know, there was no stipulation about a prenup. No, that's true. Good. Then I don't want to keep talking about it. I was not only your father's lawyer, Becca. I was his friend and your mother's. Now, I only want what's best for you. What's best for me is not a prenup. May I ask why you're so against it? Because it anticipates that the marriage is going to fail. No, that's simply not true. It protects you in the event that it fails, like life insurance, health insurance, or auto insurance. That is not the same thing. It's exactly the same thing, Becca. Your examples are for unavoidable situations. Divorce, it's entirely voluntary. Becca, 50% of marriages end in divorce. 50%. That's not me being pessimistic. And it's not a comment on you and Tom's relationship. Those are the facts. Now, for you not to take a precaution against something with a 50% failure rate, it's just not prudent. Megan, I appreciate your concern. I always do. But that is not why I'm here to talk to you. Okay, okay. I said my piece. Okay. Now, what is it? I want to know if there would be any issues should Tom and I purchase a house before we're married. Well, from a legal perspective, it makes it more complicated. Why? Because the laws for married couples are more straightforward, streamlined. Whose house would it be? Both of ours. A shared asset. Yes, shared. How do you plan to purchase the home? What do you mean? Do you plan to buy it outright? No, we don't have that kind of money. What about the down payment? Becca? 